it's Birdman for Birdman Media Patriot Edition and the Atari's Media Network, hanging out here in my garage and uh, on Facebook. And with me today, I have a gentleman who uh, does some pretty cool stuff. Uh, he, he doesn't make the products that you get, but he brings you the products in a way that you can't get it. So, <laughs> American Pouch Converters is a company. James, you got to say your last name for me because I don't want to slaughter it. <laughs> Andresic. Andresic. It is just like I thought. Cool. How you doing, James? It is like it's about good. How are you? Man? How's the baby? Well. The baby is doing well. Uh, but he's calling him the baby bird. Uh, he's doing great. He is. I was telling somebody today. He's like a frat boy, um, and you could fill in all the analogies. Want it's all he wants is the bottle, and uh, he's chasing around boobs, and then of course he's uh, he's uh, he sleeps all day and parties all night. So. <laughs> That's why my wife calls me baby. Yeah, nah, there I get you it. get it. Not, yep. Not, not Boom. Go yeah, right. My wife calls me the same thing. Huh. Interesting. There you go. Same. Uh -huh. <laughs> so there we go. <laughs> so um, you, like I was saying, you make you don't you don't make the in the product, but you do all the stuff that it comes in, huh? Yeah, the packaging. The packaging, much, yeah. yeah. And packaging, uh, having having been involved in the mobile electronics industry and then dealing with uh, companies like uh, Costco, Walmart. And uh, Amazon and uh, all those kind of stuff. Packaging's kind of important, isn't it? it is, yeah, it's 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 the lost it's the lost part of the whole equation. It's the fourth largest industry on the planet. Now that over generations, it's kind of encompassed into one large spectrum. And packaging is everything. Everything from gum, you know, your glasses on your face, earphones that came in a box. It's all packaging. Everything's so packaged. It's yeah, and we're always going to be third or fourth uh, largest on the planet. We'll never be number one because everything comes in a package. If we ever become one, well, then something's not right. Right. Well, so. that'll be interesting. <laughs> the package right. that keeps on giving or something. Uh, you know, it's right. it's, it's uh, interesting to me because everybody's always – they don't think about the cost of the packaging and the create, creation of a product. No. Uh, so that, that got, I've seen companies get into trouble with that. Um, you know, if you look at larger companies, they look at packaging for a, a loss prevention perspective. Uh, we've all had to deal with that package that you just can't get open, um, and you, you almost feel like you're going to malign the product. I, I literally picked up a, a tape measure the other day in Home Depot, and I'm like, I'm going to break this tape measure. Getting and I did. I bent the freaking right. clip trying to get it out of the package. <laughs> right, it's the one that has the part you can pull out of the freaking tape measure, but you can't. Either got to leave it in there and hang it on your belt with the package hooked on right. it, or you got to use a knife and cut it. Open. <laughs> yeah, it's those are clamshells. Security thing, which I'm not sure I understand. It still fits in my pocket if I wanted to steal it anyway. But <laughs> it's it's yeah, it's, it's the packaging forum is just freaking huge. I've been in it all my life, grew up in it, and it's just it's evolved. Even in my I'm 47, and even since then, I remember back in the day, you, a, a Ziploc was like, "Whoa, it's a Ziploc! It's got a freaking zipper. This is great. It's crazy. Awesome. Yeah, I can put my snacks in it." <laughs> and now people are like, "So they're like, what? Walmart's like three bucks for a box of Ziplocs? Great." <laughs> and I don't even make them damn that thing. package comes in packaging yeah so <laughs> it does, yeah. It's, it's very cool. and there's like secondary and primary and triple packaging and four layer and floating packaging it's dude, it's endless Crazy. it's, it's mind-boggling okay so let's back up a little bit let's talk about James mm -hmm. and uh, like where did you grow up where did life start for you God. and uh, talk a little bit <laughs> talk a little bit about high school stuff like that oh Jesus yeah well I I come from a very small town in the northern parts of Wisconsin, way up in the woods, uh, a town of 600 people. We, Our town literally had, my parents owned a bar at the time, and a resort on a lake, a fishing lake, when the lake was, didn't even have motorized boats, you had to row the boats, and the cabins were the size of an outhouse, and they had a, uh, a bunk bed and a burner in it. My job was to go in there and pick up the trash and help clean the bar Nice. when I was a little kid, and we had... Two churches in my hometown, Catholic at one end, Lutheran on the other, eight bars in the middle, and then, and that's the true story. <laughs> eight bars in the middle, and that was it. And when I moved out of that town when I was nine to a town of 8,000, and I thought I lived in New York City. <laughs> I was like, wow, this is pretty cool. <laughs> so, you know, I grew up where takes are as much as a contract, and, and a spit in your hand was kind of the thing. I mean, not literally, but, you know, the... The handshake was blood, and, and my dad's business packaging, as I grew up, started a packaging company. I grew up in it, so uh, high school was interesting for me. I was, I don't really have any enemies, class clown, screwed around a lot, right. got okay grades, 
you know. Um, I had a lot of jobs. I worked four jobs in high school, all through school. I cleaned the bar, babysat little babies that I was like 12, 14. Wow. <laughs> and I just stuck them in the corner and talked on the old Rory <laughs> dial phone, you know. Cause where I live, you only had to dial four numbers to talk to somebody. <laughs> yeah, and you know, you always try yeah. to date a girl that didn't have right. any nines or eights or zeros right. in that number. Yeah, I remember those days. That's right. Yes. <laughs> That's right. That's before you could even call 911. You just had to yell down the street. And, uh, and so I grew up in a small town, real close, and then the town of 8,000 was Medford, Wisconsin. And oh, that's wow. the home of Tombstone Pizza. That's where Tombstone Pizzas were. Really? Really named. My yeah. family's been heavily involved in that business since the day it started. Wow. Um, my mom worked there for 22 years, started out as spreading sauce with a ladle. I was in third grade. I got to see her on a field trip dumping spaghetti sauce on a piece of dough and spreading it. <laughs> and she retired 22 years later. She was the vice president of purchasing. Wow. And and uh, my partner for this business, he was one of the first people at Tombstone, and he brokered the entire sale of it to Kraft, who now owns it. So our hometown was built on Tombstone. Wow. Pizza. This is crazy. Football. I, I played football in high school, wrestled, drank a lot. Smoked cigarettes <laughs> my shit, though. Not in high school. You know, had a, no, not in high school. <laughs> had a long-term girlfriend back then. You know, and, right. Yeah, I, small town. You know, we rode three lures everywhere. We had muscle cars. You know, it's a typical country song kind of thing. Dogs, cool. beer, women, bikinis and beaches. <laughs> awesome. That's, I mean, that's really how I grew up. Cool so. stuff. So your mom worked at Tombstone, and your dad yeah, was in I'm packaging. Sure. So what, yes. how did you start that? Well, well, yeah, you well, talk about how, how did you get into the packaging? Let's talk about that. Okay. Well, he started, he's a machinist, and he's an engineer, but not by degree, just by church, just by, he's right. the smartest guy in the room usually. And um, so we just... Sorry, the gas guy's here because our gas bill's out of control. We don't even have any gas in the building. So, <laughs> sorry, Paul's he's walking through. I told him I'd be talking to you. There's an issue, huh? <laughs> yeah, it's, he's working on it. So, um, they started a packaging company by actually taking people's bags that were bad manufacturers and just running them through a freaking sealer in our garage. Oh, nice. Much. Okay. And that's how it got started. And my dad was always in plastics, and pretty soon he said, you know, we can make our own stuff. And it grew and grew. At 17, I joined the military. It took off and came back to go to school uh, in 94. And which which branch of military did you go into? I started in the National Guard, actually, first. Okay. I was a weekend warrior for about – I joined, went, came back. Got a full time job at the armory, so I went straight into active duty, which is like Title Thirty Two, you know. And I right, stayed there right. for about a year, and I wanted more, you know. I wanted more, so I'll tell you a real quick story. I went down to the recruiting station to go active army because I'd already gone through basic and AIT. I was ready to go. I was a combat engineer. I think it was twelve Bravo back then, might still be. And I uh, walked in the recruiting station. They were all at lunch. <laughs> all six armory recruiters were gone. The door was locked. And the Navy guys weren't there, neither was the Air Force. Only guy sitting at his desk in the office next door was the Marine recruiter. <laughs> I, walked, I walked in, Staff Sergeant Barwick. He was a presidential guard and a recon Marine. I walked in the door, and I said, hey. I said, you know where the Army guys are? And he, he was sitting at the desk. And this is kind of important because it kind of plays into who I am today. He was, he was eating a sandwich in, like, wax paper, <laughs> bologna and lettuce and cheese, I remember it, and drinking an orange Jolly Good soda at his desk. <laughs> And he goes, I'm sorry, what do you need? And he goes, are you Army or Marine? I said, Army, Staff Sergeant. And he goes, they're at lunch. They lunch every day. And I said, well, do you mind if I wait? He goes, you can sit on that couch right there. He goes, but today's my birthday. My five-year-old daughter made me this really shitty sandwich. <laughs> and he said, I promise her I'd eat it. He said, so I'm going to eat every bit of it and drink this cheap-ass soda that she gave me. And then I'm going to call her on the phone and thank her for it. And then he said, I'll talk to you about just hanging out. I said, and that right there, as dumb as it sounds, I said, I want to be a freaking Marine. <laughs> I mean, I was a guarantee. And listen, man, he knew it. I wanted to go somewhere. Right. And he took the time out, took the time for his kids at five minutes. Right. And to me, that was it. I was sold. And I shipped 11 days later. Nice. Never looked back. Yeah, so... Well, there's your step That's my career. Yeah, <laughs> that's my career. So I went on cow. to do all kinds of stuff, raising my hand, shipping everywhere, going to different schools and shooting and jumping and swimming and all kinds of crazy fun stuff. And found myself at the ripe age of 37, 35, with a massive injury to my neck. I got screwing some plates in there. 
and the DOD decided it was time to go. I right. fought him in court, and they said, got to go home. Got to go home. So I got out, and I said, now what do I do? So I bitched him home for about five days, got drunk, went on a big <laughs> vacation to Vegas. I did. Awesome. Went to Vegas, partied like crazy with my buddies, came back and said, okay, now what? And I knew packaging, still stayed involved in it, and that's it. I've been in ever since. Awesome. Cool. Here I am. <laughs> so, uh, wow. So how many did, some of the other guys. That's but. awesome stuff, though. No, that, that's yeah. great. Uh, now, how, how and that, that's one of the things that, that you know, like, a lot of the insurance companies, you start to talk to the people. It's about the people. It really is. You know, there's a ton of products. There's a ton of packaging products. There's a ton of different ammo products. But it really comes down to the people and how we connect as individuals and, and what makes us uh, as the, you know, the... I almost say it's like the UL stamp of approval for people is the Interis Alliance badge right. because that goes boom. Hey, you know this is a good guy, and you'll find out through process. Uh, you know the people that are here and stay. It's really about the people. Um, oh, yeah. So talk to me about how many different companies do you deal with, and what are the variety of companies that you deal with for American Pouch Group? Outside the alliance or inside or both? Or both. The whole deal. The whole both. Whole, yeah. Outside our man, our our client base is everything from this little popcorn guy here to mm -hmm. this guy here is going to be a five pound coffee pouch, which is a monster. Yes, yes. <laughs> Beef jerky guys, the old fashioned right. MRE cookie bag. You know, nice. so it's it's it, it's all over the gamut. I mean, I can't even tell you what where it starts. It's everything. We're working on a scone bag right now for a scone lady, huh. know, a little bitty one for, right. and we're working on. Uh, an ammo pouch for someone um, not really working on it. We're discussing it with any alliance. Right, um, right. Possibly putting some of the projectiles or something in a pouch, which we've done before. So there's a lot of science actually in packaging, which is, I guess, the brainiac part of me. Right. So our clients are, are all over the board. Um, guys we don't deal with are, are the super huge large retail companies. Don't have a lot of time for them. Uh, we're not large enough for those guys. Right. Um, and... The people that we deal with are partners. They're like friends of ours. My, I have ne almost never met most of my customers. And they call me all kinds of times of the day and night. And some don't even buy from me. I have a guy I've been dealing with for two years, never bought a thing from me. Oh, wow. <laughs> and I talk to him about all his shit nonstop. He constantly calls me, I got a question. And I answer his questions. Well, we just got our first order from him. Well, there you go. So yeah. it, it's totally relationship-based. I talk to every customer myself. I don't have to, and I do. I handle all of the pricing myself, and all the employees on our staff are on salary. We have no hourly people unless they're part-time, and everybody we're after right now is either a vet or disabled vet. That's what we want to bring in here. So we're even trying to figure out a way to design. If I didn't have my headset, I'd walk in, show right. you the machine in the shop, but we even have trying to build a ramp next to the machine to figure out how do we get a wheelchair-bound person up next to the machine so they can make adjustments. <laughs> wow, that's really cool. Yeah. yeah. So that's the kind of stuff we're going to do. It's all people-based. Um, our, our our suppliers and our customers are like our family, right. and they all know me like that. That's what got me really intrigued about the Alliance was that. Okay, so how did, since you opened that door, how did how did you find out about the Alliance? How did it come on your radar, and then, uh, you know, maybe who was it? Actually, by accident. It was completely by accident. It was, um, I was, I don't scroll Facebook much during the day. I try to stay off of it because I'm busy. Um, cause I really don't give a shit about it. <laughs> but, but, cause, you know, my wife, she's crazy. She's all over Facebook, you know. Um, well, it's, it's recipes and, fighting about Trump and cat photos. So, anyways, yeah. Yeah, it is true. It's true. And, you know, every so often you come across some weird stuff that I'm not sure. Like, People of Walmart is my favorite show to watch. Oh, there you go. Um, yeah. And I saw. I think it was either LinkedIn or Facebook. I came across Kate Casey's link or video or something about it, and I was like, "And Terrace Alliance, what's this?" And and I knew what it meant right. in Latin. Oh, I wow! Like, I, well, I worked at a military academy for a few years, and, and they threw a lot of Latin words around because you know they love the Latin words. We're, we're giving Ron was, Bellin such crap about this. He's going to have to watch this episode now. See that somebody actually found us because of a Latin word. That's awesome. You're right. <laughs> well, he's worked, he's worked at St. John's Northwestern Military Academy back in the day as an instructor wow. or as a tech officer. So I kind of I was like, I mean, pillar or something like that, some shit like that. So I said, I don't know, but I clicked on it anyway. And there's Casey's big old mug, you know, on the screen, and he's talking to me, and not to me, he's talking, and within three minutes, I was like, this sounds pretty. 
pretty interesting. Yeah. So I got to I got to pause you for one second. Oh I'm no so problem. Sorry. Hang on. Sorry. Okay, brief interruption there. We had to deal with a, a gas issue. <laughs> We're just going to leave it as a gas issue and make everybody wonder. Anyways. Um. Yes, it's, it's, I am on a new workout plan and a new diet. So it's like, whoo. Oh, no. That's why there's nobody but me. So uh, now everybody gets to ask you about your gas issue and you explain why it costs $365. Right. But anyways. Um. <laughs> well, you know, I, because we don't package the gas. We did it wouldn't leak and that'd be it. So if, if you dealt with that, it'd be okay. Yeah. It's, it's uh, right. yeah. <laughs> anyways. Sorry. James, James is a good sport. We can already tell he's got a great sense of humor. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So, Casey basically did it. Um, yeah, the video. The video out there. It. That's very good. Yeah. I watched it. It was 43 minutes, if I'm not mistaken. And I watched it, the whole thing, when my phone was running off the hook, but I was pretty entranced by it. And I said, you know, this is exactly who we are. It's right. This way he talked. And it, if you've gone to our website before and read the part of who we are, it says exactly that. You know, we're handshake. Right. We're. I had American patriots, military, you know, um, uh, first responder law, we're, we're totally those people. Right. And Tom and I, from the core, are those people. And Tom is, he, he's an older guy, but that is him. Um, Hang, on a second. In the show. Hang on a second. Hang on a second. I got to come back. Oh, <laughs> I just made you go blank. <laughs> I don't know why. Okay. So Tom's that guy. Yeah, so that awesome. I, cool. I showed it to Tom. I said, I want to be a part of this. And, and he said, absolutely. It was literally a three-minute conversation. I emailed Casey up on LinkedIn, got on the phone. I think within a couple of days, got a couple of phone calls, ended up being passed around. Tom got me on the phone, did my interview. Yep. And he said, oh, dude, before the interview was even over, he said, you're in. <laughs> <laughs> sort of. Sort of. And Casey called and said, hey, man, love to have you. But prior to that, though, I actually am number 52, <laughs> lifetime member. Nice. Before we became part of the alliance, I personally watched that video, and as I'm talking to Tower on the on the phone, I'm buying my lifetime membership. Very awesome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I got the 52 coin. I'm pretty proud of that. You know, I wish I was number like five, but that's all right. I'll take 52. Yeah. <laughs> Which is funny because uh, I have coin number six and coin number 54. 54 because I selected it on purpose uh, as a family-based oh, yeah. number, but. Uh, uh, we six is actually a family number. Could have had one, but it's it's okay. Yeah, that was one of the the first. Uh, I, mean, we I think we're at sixty something. I don't know. Yeah. No, 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 no. I'm sorry. It's over a hundred. Yeah. Say this because uh, someone's gonna want that sixty special number. Yeah. Right. <laughs> it's the break about it. Oh man, of course. <laughs> hey, that's right. Did you see the coin? Thing I did out on Facebook a few weeks ago. I'm I have not. Everybody on Facebook. Well, we got yeah, a link there. On Facebook. Okay. And I did it on the Ontario CEO page, and I said, "Bam!" No. Oh, nobody oh. coined me back. Oh, so nobody coined you back. Drinks. <laughs> yeah. Try and buy. Well, try and buy. I'm not buying one if, drink. If it didn't click, we didn't hear it. Yeah, it doesn't count. Yeah, no click, no sound. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not buying one beer. That's all there is to it. Man, okay. Well, you you coined me technically, so I can reach into my pocket and go. Oh yeah! Oh, <laughs> so I don't know you nothing. <laughs> Damn, it. Damn it! But I mean, this is talk. This is what we we wanted to be in, not just because of the veteran thing. Uh, I've been involved in law enforcement for a while too. I also wore a badge for a short time, um, and it just wasn't where I wanted to be. And um, so I come from a history of military. Everybody has served in my family except for my father. He was never drafted during Nam. He's A one eligible. Had wow. one son. Didn't get drafted. Everybody else has served or still serving, including my I'm fourth generation. So wow. it was it was natural for us. Then I got in and started digging through the alliances memberships, going like, who's all in there? Well, we're the only packaging guy. Go figure. Right. Nobody right. knows what the hell we do anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> nobody knows what the hell we do. And, I, and that's the first thing I told. I think I've said this before um, to you guys in the interview was the first thing I thought: How the hell are we going to fit in here? I mean, personally wise, I know we'll fit in. Well, technically, you know, all of our products fit into yours, so boom. Yeah. Right. <laughs> how, do I fit and how do I make everybody understand why we're here? And Casey said the same thing. He said, we'll f I think I could talk to you too. You said, we'll find a way to make it make sense. And I still get requests from people going, so what exactly? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, we do certain things. And they're like, well, what? And we do tapes and labels and all kinds of stuff. So we're getting there. People are starting to call from the Alliance and asking some questions and and we're working on a few projects we have not closed yet because some people are very difficult to work with. <laughs> they have ideals in their head that you can't, you know, they are, 
they want to be here, or really they just need to be here right now. And but we don't just sell. I won't just sell you anything if you call me. I want this. If it isn't good for you, I won't. I won't sell it to you. Very good. Um, awesome. We're about making sure your business grows the right way, and um, we are building a program now to try to give a part of all of our profits every year back to a charity of choice. And I'm also developing a program right now, which is really cool, is that we're going to take some portion, our stuff sold per thousand units or whatever it may be, because it, it's usually a pouch. Right. So there's usually 20 or 50 or 100,000 or a million on whatever they order. We're building a program now that makes sense to say, okay, we're talking to the attorneys, of course, and the bean counters to say, how much can we give back to any organization? So we're going to offer customers to say, if you buy your product at the normal price, we're going to donate X amount of that order back to a charity of your choice. Wow. To a point. Well, we have to find a way to control it because I don't want them calling and telling me we're going to send it to like, you know, the KKK because that's not going to happen. <laughs> so we got to find a way, you know, to make sure the charities make sense. Well, yeah. And then we'd like to donate. And then we'd like to come up with a way to kind of give something back to the Alliance for new members like us when we started. We didn't know where we fit. And maybe there's companies out there that really can't afford to be part of us, but they're growing. Right. So can we like build a fund of our own to give to your Casey and say, hey, here's 500 bucks to give to those guys towards their membership. So we're coming up with all kinds of ideas to try to stay active in the alliance, even if we don't sell one freaking thing. Completely phenomenal. That's what we're after. Awesome. Well, so and free beer. And it, and free beer. Right. And American <laughs> pouch. And it's American pouch converters or convert. What is it? Converters. Converters. Okay. The, I could explain the converters part because that one doesn't. I get America pouch. The converters yeah. part I don't converters get. Converters is it's a packaging term. Anybody who takes a piece of something oh. and makes it into a packaging, it's called converting. There you go. So I'm converting the film, which comes in a big old roll, okay. to whatever you want it to be. I always ask these questions because, you know, I'm the one that finally says to Ron, well, how come you only got one eye, dude? You know, so. <laughs> <laughs> I know Rob really likes you too. What, what happened to your other eye? And he laughs. He's like, yeah, nobody ever wants to ask me that. I'm like, well, everybody wants to know. So, you know, no, okay. <laughs> exactly. Now, if I was missing an ear, I'd be like, what happened to my ear? Yeah, okay, Mr. Van Gogh. Um, cool. But you meet my wife. But you meet my wife. You'll meet her eventually. Try and yes. you meet my wife. She's the person. She'd be like, say, what the hell's wrong with your face? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And she yeah. runs the house. I'm not, I'm, by well, no means am I ever in any kind of like dream world that I <laughs> as, as we just talked about the Tiffany blue pistol on the desk is hers I now have to carry it because she doesn't want to she don't want a Tiffany blue yeah no yeah I don't no. buy my wife anything pink either so yeah that's right it matches my bra yeah well there you go <laughs> you probably cut that part gas off. and bras <laughs> leaving it in uh, you're stuck with it James Andrezik with American Pouch oh. Converters thank you very much appreciate your time thank you for your service Absolutely. as well and uh, I love the fact that you're in the Marine Corps because you found out Marines actually have a heart. So <laughs> that's a good thing. <laughs> He's looking around. That's how you get married, have kids, and then you're like, okay. <laughs> I didn't say anything about Boy, balls. Man. I said heart. But okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, okay. Cool. Awesome. Hey, uh, thank hey, you very thank much. Thank you so much. No problem. My pleasure. Hey, that's going to be it for this episode of the Antares Media Network. I'm Birdman for Birdman Media Patriot Edition, reminding you, I'll see you again soon. and then also on Facebook as well. The links are down below. It's easy to follow. You know it's easy to subscribe on YouTube. So check it out. Got any questions, please shoot them in the comments below. I always get back to everyone eventually. I'm Birdman. Have a good day.